Because at first we didn't, at first there was no mention of attached spirits, at first we processed on energy centres. And that was kind of a known thing. You know, you talk about energy, you know, and so we were just processing initially in the first few seminars anyway, <coughs> to clear the blocks we had in all those energy centres. It was only later that he started to talk about attached spirits and um, that we believed that we were processing on them. So it was draw you were drawn in, you weren't taken from something um, into something that the mind would immediately recognise as being completely and utterly outlandish, at least the way I, the way I was taken in. Because certainly when you're out recruiting, you don't tell them exactly what it's all about. You talk about um, um, if, 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 you, if they want friends, well, there's lots of nice people in Kenja. Um, if you want to improve your life, well, then why not try? This is a great opportunity. Um, there is no informed consent, none whatsoever in Kenja. You do not know what you're going in for. But to a degree, of course, you do. You know you're going along to have a session. You know they have dancing. But the agenda of being trapped so that you will go back week after week after week and contribute to somebody's retirement fund is certainly not a known thing. That your mind will be captured and changed. That you will, if if they are good enough and you are responding in such in uh, equally and are good enough too, that you will leave and change. You know that you you will change your mind. You will leave everything that you believed that you loved and cared about. You, that, that you'll reject it and that you will completely and utterly, to the degree that it is possible, to be um, a Kenjin. How much does it cost a week to be involved in Kenjin? Um, I, look, when I, I left, I worked out that I'd spent over $100,000 in the time that I was involved, but somebody else looked at me and said, Annette, that's a very, very conservative estimate. Because of all the sessions, um, and the sessions were hundred dollars then, and workshops were two hundred dollars, and there was all the estimates, and then there was the long workshops and the longer workshops. Um, it was a great deal of money, and everything cost. I mean, you bought a meal there, you know, you, you were even eating there at the end, uh, and all the little bits and pieces cost, the ballroom dancing cost. So they said that it was all for non-profit. Those things were for non-profit, but I wouldn't be surprised to hear that you know because of if they wouldn't exist without Ken, therefore he got us cut anyway. He certainly did. He, come, he said to us that it was a million dollar a year organisation, of which some no doubt went to running expenses, but as much as possible we would give free labour. Nobody worked, nobody got paid to, to only the professionals, but nobody else. And all the work was done, all the renovations were done, everything was done. If we needed money, we fundraised. So it didn't come out of any precious, any, you know, any revenue. Towards the end of my time in Kendra, I was not used, and it was quite devastating. What is it? What? Noticed? It's um, that you literally, I, uh, you are not, you don't exist. So, um, if, for example, you start, you know, you know, you're completely and utterly ignored. So, if you cry, no, nobody's going to notice you. Um, if you beg, nobody's going to hear you. You know, if you die, nobody cares. Nobody's going to notice. Nobody will look. It's been completely and utterly. You can be in the room, but you do not exist. And this is a Kenja thing? It's a Kenja thing, it's called not easing. It could, could even be from Scientology, I'm not sure. But um, if that, that I was frightened of, and eventually that did happen to me. And that was, that was quite devastating to me, being not eased, especially by Ken. Because, you know, at that point I was in a mess and I really wanted to please him. And uh, I, I was just, as I say, I just didn't exist. And that was infinitely more frightening to me than then being kicked out. The nakedness was not so much a big thing in wall walking, but certainly in my case it would, it, I would be processed naked because I was a committed Kenjin. Um, you'd have a, you couldn't leave the room, you'd have a bucket in case you wanted to vomit or in case you wanted to go to the toilet. And um, the processor would have to stand, your processor would have to stand in the same place for the entire four hours and give repeat the same set of commands and the first command was you walk that body over to that wall and I would stand there and on that command I'd walk over to the wall and I'd get to the wall and I'd just stand and look at the wall because you couldn't jump the gun and the next command was with that body's hand you touch that wall and touch the wall put your hand down and still stand and they would say thank you 
and then you turn that body around. So only then could you turn your body around, face the processor, view processor, still standing there, and then again say thank you. And then you walk that body back to that wall. And that went on for four hours. At, or until you were no longer upset and angry because you get very, very angry and very, very upset because you were being controlled. You couldn't jump the gun. I couldn't scratch my blood, you know, scratch my head or, or decide to, to, to turn around before I was told it would start again. You know, that set of commands would start, would start again. And it was four hours of just being controlled until any resistance that you had to being controlled would be, um, we believed it would be running out. And as I said, if you didn't finish within the four hours, it would go on. I mean, the longest session I ran was for six hours. That's a long time to be both standing there as a process or too. Um, and, and for the person doggedly going backwards and forwards, you know. So that, that was, that was quite, that didn't do it all the time. And I believe now, I didn't believe it at the time, but I believe now it was only used on people in the, who, who they sense were not really towing the line and needed a little additional help in, in being docile. Whatever was done, was done because Ken, Ken loved us. He t told us that he didn't care whether we loved him in return, but he loved us. And he loved us so much that he was willing to hurt us in the process. The end justifies the means. So did that mainly take the, the form of, of verbal abuse or...? It meant that the verbal abuse was seen as him trying to help us to become stronger. So if I'm going to be abused, am I going to crumble? In Kenja I had the chance to, to not only confront it, but to go beyond it and become big, brave and strong, which is what I, what I wanted. I didn't. <laughs> But that's what I wanted. We believed that we were, we were you know, that the nakedness wasn't important. We were actually observing barriers. There were, there were barriers about being naked. Uh, you didn't abuse the fact that you were naked. You were naked purely and simply to um, facilitate processing. Of course, the hidden agenda was that it was so compromising that it was a little nail in the coffin too. I mean, you're going to leave and you, you know, unconsciously, the, the unconscious fear of confront, you know, what what you've been doing is very, very strong. So there was a great deal of. So as I say, it's 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 the it, the experiencing of that wasn't as shocking as it sounds. Was there anything sexual about those? Oh, in some seminars, in some, I did a series of seminars, there were um, six people, they were, not, not, um, not intercourse, but some were qu quite sexual in nature. In, in terms of, was there mutual masturbating or...? In, in one there was. Not, you know, no, no, not mutual, not mutual. Not, I was never on one, there was only when there was individual. And did Ken, in particular, get involved with? Um, not no. When I was when, when the, in those seminars, when I did those seminars, Ken was always clothed. He publicly maintained, you know, when I well, this is publicly in front of this group, the group, in front of uh, no, he was always he was uh, only one seminar I did with Ken. He was naked from the waist down, but I have no memory of the seminar, of the seminar, the session, and that was with him at his place, and that was very early days when I was in Kenya. And all I remember at the end was that he was naked from the waist down, and I don't remember anything else about the session. Except that at the end of it, he told me to go and be kind to myself because I had a very big session. What has happened to, uh, to is a lot of Kenyans? And not just the tips of the iceberg, the ones that you read about in the newspapers, but rank, you know, lots and lots of Kenyans have suffered terribly because of what has happened in Kenya. And at some point, some, um, you know, Ken, whether it's come about through ignorance, to what extent he does believe in what he's doing, at some point he does have to take responsibility 
for what is happening to these people. But at the same time, I think it's more than just that. Society needs to take some degree of responsibility because we are not taught, it's not, nothing is taught about mind control in the schools, not in the past and not now. So that it does in the, you know, the, one of the bottom lines is it takes two to tango. If, if I had have known what was going to happen, there's no way I would have got involved in Kenya. Absolutely. I mean, I left an utter wreck. I had nothing. Nothing, nobody, nothing. No job, no nothing. No money, no family, no nothing. Well, I had a family, but a tenuous little link. And had I understood about the nature of mind control, I most certainly wouldn't have gone into Kenya because I would have smelt a rat, because a rat was there to be smelt had I had something to grasp onto. But I didn't and I couldn't. So it's more than just trying to get this one man or, or, or the, you know, whoever's head of exclusive brethren or, you know, society does, I think, need to take some degree of responsibility for making sure, for, for, for educating its children in particular, that these groups exist, that there is such a thing as mind control, that you will change your life, you will let go of everything if, it, 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 you know, it is possible to do this.